the new updated NICE guidelines on the management of menopause came out today, 7th of November, 2024. I'm going to run through highlights of this. And also we have a statement letter from the British Menopause Society on high HRT doses. Yep, just like buses, two advice guidance around menopause has come at once. So let's pick them apart. Firstly, back to the new NICE guidelines, which is very much focused on individualized care, identifying perimenopause and menopause. That includes the tests that we should be recommending as well. Discussing management options and treatment options for those over the age of 40, effects of hormone replacement therapy on other health conditions, also diagnosing and managing ovarian insufficiency in people under the age of 40. Stopping and starting hormone replacement for everybody and also reviewing treatment options because there have been lots of difficulties in people getting access to the doctor, GPs that do menopause care, as well as getting regular and consistent health checks because currently as it stands, it's not part of a recommended recall system that we have, say for cardiovascular disease, asthma, COPD or diabetes. It's up to the individual patient to make sure that they go back to their GP to have HRT reviews. One of the significant updates in the new guidelines is that hormone replacement therapy, HRT, is the first line treatment, not antidepressants for menopausal symptoms. As it states here, there's a list of menopausal symptoms which affect the whole body that we're looking out for. It also takes into account changes in menstrual cycle. Now we're also considering vasomotor symptoms, so that's hot flushes and night sweats. But what the NICE guidelines doesn't say effectively is that actually some women don't get hot flushes. So please do not think that hot flushes are the only symptom in order to get HRT. There's also genitourinary syndrome of the menopause, so vaginal dryness or vaginal atrophy, effects on mood. Now we do know that for some women, actually, I would say about 80% of women that I see, the most significant symptoms are their psychological symptoms. So low self-esteem, low self-confidence, brain fog, irritability, tiredness, confusion. It could also be anger, low mood, depression, tearfulness, loss of joy. Lots of psychological symptoms are actually the most significant symptoms that affect their life, not always vasomotor symptoms. It's also taken into musculoskeletal symptoms, so aches and pains, something that I see a lot in South Asian or black communities, um, as well as other communities, and sexual difficulties, low sexual desire, low libido. The other recommendation is that people experiencing menopausal symptoms need to be reminded and also checking for maintaining muscle mass and strength because we want to reduce the risk of osteoporosis. This has been amended in 2024. The other thing is, is to offer advice and support for menopause and fertility in people who are likely to experience menopause as a result of medical or surgical treatment. This has to be done before and after. So a lot of patients that I see who've gone through surgical chemical menopause are actually never having any of these uh, conversations. So now this has been amended in 2024. The other updated advice is offering psychological support for those experiencing menopause or symptoms between the age of 40 and 44. Now, as much as I think that we should be having a holistic uh, review of all patients, I'm really disheartened by this advice because it means that we're not considering offering hormone replacement therapy. Yes, hormone replacement therapy is first line, but I think we need to be really careful to not offer women a label or a diagnosis, which is a, psych a psychological diagnosis. What they're experiencing is menopausal symptoms because historically we um, psychologize so much of women's biological transitional changes that are happening with them. So as much as yes, this is fine, and they are saying that you should do this alongside HRT, it shouldn't be in replace of giving HRT if a woman is having significant or even menopausal symptoms, which is impacting her life. And also, this is now part of a postcode lottery because it's we don't have access to psychological services on the NHS. I definitely, in my area, can't refer patients for psychological services or CBT for menopausal symptoms. So maybe by adding it to the NICE guidelines, one of the things could be is that this could be what CCBs have to really think about because funding has to go into the fact that we support women in a holistic way. I'm pleased to see that there's greater emphasis on topical vaginal estrogen for genitourinary syndrome, the menopause or vaginal atrophy. There's also advice for those that have had breast cancer or family history of breast cancer or worried about breast cancer. So now there's a really good algorithm to follow, which people can look at with their specialist, their oncologist, their breast cancer team, as well as their GP, because the bottom line from the NICE guidance updated in 2024 is women who've had breast cancer, it is safe for them to have topical vaginal estrogen to support their pelvic health so stop uh, UTIs to decrease the risk of vaginal dryness to decrease the risk of perineal tears to decrease the risk of overactive bladder symptoms and also stress incontinence 
and this is given alongside topical vaginal moisturizers and lubricants. In the updated guideline, there is a greater emphasis on looking at HRT and the likelihood of some medical conditions. There's a really handy toolkit for the GP so they can show in numbers and figures the risk of getting things like breast cancer, endometrial cancer, ovarian cancer, stroke, ischemic heart disease, dementia, osteoporosis, with or without considering hormone replacement therapy, taking combined hormone replacement therapy or estrogen only hormone replacement therapy. So this is what the document looks like. It gives you visual aids to go through with your patient if you want to discuss the combined hormone replacement therapy or estrogen only hormone replacement therapy and the risk on other conditions in their body as well. And some of the data is really telling as well because actually it shows that as what we already knew, hormone replacement therapy is protective for brain, heart, bone health, as well as endometrial protection and also the overall well-being of an individual. Overall, are the new guidelines as robust as we wanted them? I think we're getting closer and closer. It doesn't make a distinction between the older synthetic type hormone replacement therapy and the new transdermal body identical estrogen and micronized progesterone. So we needed a bit more guidance of that in this data as well. There are some studies which are, I think we could have had more information and I still think that we're lacking a lot of advice for say neurodivergent community, so ADHD and menopause, which I'm seeing a lot of. So it doesn't really tackle issues around that because we already know that marginalized communities, those from so lower socioeconomic backgrounds, have less of an access to say hormone replacement therapy. However, this is going to give us some advice and also pictorial guidance in regards to what we can do with our patients in general practice. And now that the guidelines are there, those that who don't practice menopause care or women's health um, can go to their GP and say, look, this is what the NICE guideline says that I am entitled to. Please, can you work with me on this? Which brings me back to empowering our patients with having the knowledge and then therefore going and having a chat on an individualised care plan with their doctors. Now I know that there was a BBC documentary that was made which caused a lot of upset. So the British Menopause Society has said, further, some women do require higher doses of oestrogen outside of the licensing guidelines. And this should not be regarded as standard practice, but it does recognise that some women do need higher doses. And this is really significant. There is no evidence to justify stopping HRT at a certain age and dose adjustments should be carried out on an individual basis. Therefore, your age should not dictate or be a barrier to you getting access to hormone replacement therapy. On initiation of HRT, you should be having a three monthly check, then maybe a six monthly check and then an annual check. I hope this has been helpful and as always leave your comments below.